Hey everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. Today we're taking a look at 50 new changes and features and differences in iOS 12, specifically on the iPhone X as well as a couple uh, for the iPad being the iPad Pro 9.7 that I have. But these will be the same for essentially all iOS 12 devices with some small differences. All right, so starting off with number one and two, when you go into Control Center, you now have two new options for hearing uh, as well as for scan QR code. So if you go ahead and add those and then you go into your Control Center, you can see you have scan QR code and this is built into the camera application. So you can already get to this anyway, but you simply scan your QR code and then you are good to go uh, with getting on with your day. So in photos, there is a now for you section. So you have different things. This is similar to what we already had, but with people, events, stuff like that. So you have a memory, Christmas day, for instance. And if I go into share photos, it will give me share suggestions. It'll give me examples of people that are in the pictures or think that might want it. And I can go ahead and share those pictures. Now, something a little bit less explicit and more just feature based and improvement uh, would be portrait mode. So portrait mode has been improved. Uh, it just works better than it did before. So when you take a picture, it has just been improved. It's a little bit better, uh, a little bit better optimization than it was before. Again, this isn't something they talked about, but it's something that just has been improved. So it will make portrait pictures uh, and using portrait mode a little bit better. Up next is a small one. So iBooks is no longer called iBooks, is now called Apple Books. Not a whole big change there, but when you go into it, you just see it is now Apple Books and it is no longer iBooks. So Apple is kind of going away with the i moniker a little bit and going mainly to Apple, like the Apple Watch, for instance. So when you go into the iPhone storage section, you see you just have a slight redesign. Things look a little bit different. It's a little bit cleaner. I like it a little bit flatter. So that's just a minor change there with the storage settings um, on your iPhone. Now, when you take a screenshot, you see you have new changes for the opacity um, as well as for the thickness of the scribbling tools. So you can go ahead and work with that and get uh, more exact and precise adjustments for your uh, editing tools for screenshots. Now in iMessage before you had the little eye icon for more information and to look at the pictures and stuff in the contact. Now you have to tap on the contact, you get the three settings and then you click the info button and you can see more information, images, attachments, stuff like that. So this is a slight redesign. In Apple News, there is a new browse tab. This isn't anything uh, super interesting, but it is there now and it's new and we just have some slight changes with Apple News with new curation and new settings uh, with your Apple News. Nothing crazy there, but there's some slight redesigns and differences. Now there are also new Animojis. There are four new Animojis. Uh, this isn't anything crazy and something that you may or may not even use to begin with, but you can now do that. And addition, there is new tongue support which is kind of weird uh, but it can support you sticking out your tongue and it will reflect that and of course there are me emojis which allows you to customize basically your animoji make it into a bitmoji uh, which allows you to customize it and you can make a bunch and you can make it kind of crazy like a, uh, an avatar or you can make it like you and you can get fairly close um, to you uh, and you can use that now for uh, animojis and that's nice if you are a person that uses that but of course you can stick out your tongue so that's new and weird there is now a slight difference in the camera settings if you go in uh, there is a format option for high performance um, or most compatible or high efficiency which is going to change between h.265 and 264 before you'd have the settings in the individual options now you just have one default setting and then it will do that automatically now it'll tell you what mode you're shooting for in the camera for instance it says 4k 30 in the corner so it'll say that for your video modes now the new feature is the ability to use your phone or Apple Watch as your student ID for getting into your dorm, for paying for things, uh, for your meal plan at universities. Currently, there are only, I believe, six universities that support that, including Duke and uh, Alabama. Uh, that should be coming to more schools hopefully soon, uh, but that is a new feature with iOS 12 is using it as a student ID card. There has been a slight redesign to the passwords and account uh, page. It's nothing crazy, but you just see some slightly different icons and a slightly new look to it pretty minor but it's nice to have there also there's now the ability to autofill straight from one password so if you are a one password user you are now able to autofill straight into safari when you are browsing the web of course there's also the new wallpaper there is only one new wallpaper which is unfortunate with all of apple talking about all the new wallpapers of earth and stuff like that for the apple tv uh, this is the only new wallpaper it does look nice but it's the only new one 
uh, available for iOS 12. Additionally, we have a new control. Uh, when you are playing music, it will reflect. It's a little bit uh, changes to the color of the background, but it has a dark overlay. I'm not a fan of this personally, but that is a new change for your lock screen and music. Speaking of lock screen, if you get your face ID wrong on the first time and it goes into uh, your passcode settings, you now can swipe up to get back into face ID to try it again, which saves a little bit of time and hassle when you are going uh, into face ID settings to unlock your phone. There's also now a bedtime mode in the new do not disturb. So if we go into there, you can turn on bedtime mode. And if you have it scheduled, which is the only way you can use it, uh, automatically it will turn on bedtime mode, which makes everything dark and just gives you the information that you need so that if you're waking up in the middle of the night, you're not blinded by A, a bright screen and B, by notifications. So bedtime mode is something that can be scheduled automatically with do not disturb. Additionally, in control center, you have some new options when you 3D touch do not disturb. Same for on the iPad. If you go into here, you get some new settings uh, for one hour until this evening or until I leave, or you can schedule it yourself. Hopping over real quickly to the iPad, we have a slightly updated status bar. You can see up in the corner, we have your date and time instead of at the center. And on the right side, you now have your control center, just like on the iPhone. So the iPad now has the iPhone 10 gestures. So you can go in an application and you swipe up to go home. Uh, you can also still pull up your dock if you're in an app just by doing it more slowly. Uh, but those are some differences on the iPad in terms of UI. Now on the iPhone 10, when you swipe up and to get into your recent apps, you don't have to hold uh, to get into the jiggle mode. You just swipe up and you can close an application. Now, when you're taking a look at notification centers for a particular application, it just gives you new icons and images for the type of banners that you can be expecting. So you get a better visual of that. So that's just a slight change. And I think it looks nice and makes it pretty clear what you are changing. There's now a new screen time setting. So this is a big deal uh, for monitoring how much you use applications, how much time you spend using apps, either by the individual apps or by genres. You can also set limits to how much you can use apps and you can get reminders. And then you can put content and privacy restrictions. Currently, there's a weird bug where I can't do this. I'm still trying to figure out how to fix this. But if I pull it up on my iPad, you can see generally what it would look like if you have all of those options, including downtime to be away from the screen, set limits, choose apps you want to use at all times, etc. And you can uh, work with those settings and you should get a graph of all of your data, which is nice. Additionally, when you go into battery, you get some nice new data, some more visuals for it, uh, as well as better graphs. And that's going to be really nice for taking a look exactly what is killing your battery. Of course, you still have low power mode, which you can also trigger still in control center. And then your battery health, which you can see my battery health is going down a little bit. Um, but then, of course, you just have your graph and you see what exactly is using the data. And you can see that photos, for some reason, is using my battery. There are new Siri shortcuts, which are supposed to be an application, but that is not here yet. But for now, there is just this toggle and you can see some of these things. So the idea here is that you set a command uh, for Siri. So if you were to say beach, I can automatically tell you the weather, give you a reminder to put on sunscreen, text somebody that you're leaving and get directions, stuff like that. There's a redesign stocks application. I'm still not a fan of this because it's just really small and it's not you know super easy to see. You can't add your own portfolio to see how your stocks are doing, but of course, you can still have your list and then there is news and you have a little bit more detail when looking at the stocks application so that's the big deal here and you see that apple is closely approaching that one trillion dollar market cap they're currently at 949.2 billion dollars of course there is now a new measure application and when you have this you use augmented reality to try to measure things so for instance if i have this piece of paper i can choose one corner and then go to the other corner Click that and it will give me a rough approximation of how tall that piece of paper is. And it says it is seven and a half inches. Again, they're going to be very approximate. They're not going to be super detailed, but for in general, getting dimensions of things, that's going to be pretty cool. So that is the measure application uh, also with the level that is built into your iPhone now. Which then means, of course, because the level is in that application, the level is no longer in the Compass app. So you'll probably have even less reason to open up the Compass application. Group notifications are now a thing. So you go ahead and click on a stack of notifications and it will open it up. You can see that you can also clear them all or you can open and then show less. So that's just a nice way to organize notifications. I still wish they were a little bit flatter and more concise and condensed like they are at Android. But this is a nice step. In the right direction and then finally we have group facetime which allows for a facetime up to 32 people i will demonstrate that in a video when i have the ability to show it off better but for now that is a nice change
So those are 50 changes and new details. Uh, nothing is too huge with this on iOS 12, but there are some nice changes, still some things lacking. Hopefully we'll still see some things coming with future beta updates. But for now, that is it. 50 things on iOS 12 shown off on my iPhone 10 here, as well as the iPad Pro. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Check out my other iOS 12 videos. Stay tuned, leave comments for anything you want to see. Thank you for watching.